Dear friends, dear colleagues, I'm very happy to greet you tonight on the occasion of awarding Miladin Životić Award. And the lecture will be given by Maurizio Ferraris, the uh, awardee of uh, 2022 year. I will give a few words about uh, uh, why we established this award and uh, why we gave it to Maurizio. After that, my colleague Mark Loschant will uh, uh, say a little bit more about uh, uh, the reasons of giving award and the work of Maurizio Ferraris and afterwards we are going to give it the award and hear Maurizio's lecture. So ever since its founding, the Institute for Philosophy and Social Theory has nurtured critical and socially engaged thinking. The Institute's founders, seven professors from University of Belgrade, Faculty of Philosophy, were removed from lecturing position precisely for practicing such forms of thinking. This, however, could not prevent them from taking up once again within the newly found institute the, analysis, uh, the analysis and unmasking of deviations of the very model communities that they construe theoretically and from working toward their further practical realization. Being the heir to the, this tradition, the Institute for Philosophy and Social Theory has established a prize for critical engagement to be awarded to those theorists of society whose work has had a significant impact on the broader public. The Institute has decided that the award should bear the name Miladic Životic. We all decided on this. Uh, all of, of all numerous founding members of the Institute whose work exemplifies socially engaged theory and theoretically grounded social engagement, Miladin Životic stands out as the one who acted most consistently and risk the most. Philosophical critique and the need to speak out in the public, interwoven with his personality, were put to the test both when he challenged the political monopoly in 60s and 70s of former Yugoslavia and when he openly, actively and unconditionally opposed violence, war and crimes during the 19th war on the territory of former Yugoslavia. Though incorruptible, through more, more incorruptible moral tenacity and compassionate humanity, Životić demonstrated that standing up, up for one's values must become a binding virtue for every thinker. He lived and died as a gauge and critical thinker. In 2022, the committee decided to confer annual award for the critical engagement Miladin Životić on Maurizio Ferraris. Maurizio Ferraris is a prominent Italian philosopher and professor at the University of Turin. As an Italian philosophy star, known on TV, known through his column in the newspapers La Repubblica, Neue Zürcher Zeitung and Liberation, he managed to make a place for philosophy in everyday life. On television, newspapers, on the radio, introducing sophisticated argumentation about banal matters. In doing so, he draws our attention to the specificity of this moment when science and philosophy are criticized not only by tyrants, but also by ordinary citizens. This is the moment of mistrust in science and has the role of scientists and philosopher even more is to work to bring their trust back. I will quote Maurizio here with words that are particularly important for me personally, but I also think for us as the Institute in pursuing our mission and strange as it may seem, as it said as it is, this, and this meaning the critique by the ordinary citizens, is one consequence of the enlightenment. That is the implementation of the principle, dare to think for yourself. Unfortunately, the other two principles of the enlightenment, which are learn to think in agreement with yourself, meaning in a consequent way, and another one, learn to think by putting yourself in the position of others, have not been achieved because they are much more difficult to implement." End of quote. Maurizio engages himself in enlightening people, being one of those going out of philosopher's ivory towers. He intensively deals with the question of traces, that is documents and archives in the age of internet technologies. I'm mentioning this because with this award, we want to leave a trace, a document that will be a long-standing testimony to his critical engagement. I'm now inviting Mark to read. Dear colleagues, dear visitors, allow me to say a few words on behalf of the Milatin Životic Prize Committee on the occasion of the prize 
bestowal upon Maurizio Ferraris. Maurizio Ferraris is professor of theoretical philosophy at the University of Turin and president of the Laboratory for Ontology. Previously, he was program director of the Collège International de Philosophie in Paris. He has taught at the University of Trieste and at the University of Macerata. He has, um, Ferraris was also a lecturer at Harvard in Munich, Paris, Beijing, and Rio de Janeiro. He is currently the director of the Scienza Nuova, the Institute for Advanced Studies in Turin, author of 70 books, most of which have been translated into various languages. Finally, Ferraris is editor of the journal Revista di Estetica and member of the editorial board of the journal Critique. Maurizio Ferraris completed his undergraduate studies in philosophy at the University of Turin in 1979 under the mentorship of Gianni Vattimo and was subsequently mentored by Jacques Derrida at UHSS in Paris. His intellectual development shows a strong link and well as a critical and productive dialogue with the work of his mentors. Much as for Derrida, it has been important for Ferraris not to accept the binarity of writing and the spirit wherein the latter has priority. <coughs> However, for Ferraris, this insight is transformed into a social ontology, according to which it is not intentionality or interpretation that is decisive for social objects, but rather documents or inscription. In line with this, Ferraris argues that it is not documentality that derives from intentionality, but vice versa. Paraphrasing, but at the same time modifying Derrida's well-known formula, Ferraris stresses that there is nothing social outside the text. After intensive collaboration and communication with Derrida and Hans-Georg Gadamer throughout the 80s, Ferraris increasingly moved away from deconstruction and hermeneutics towards a new way of thinking, which served as a corrective to earlier currents, a new position Ferraris sometimes describes as post-postmodernism. Furthermore, Ferraris has engaged creatively with analytic philosophy and begun to interpret the history of philosophy in original ways, as we see from his book, Goodbye Kant. In his later works, Ferraris has sought to conceptualize aesthetics in terms of perception and sensory experience, putting forward a philosophical realism, specifically what he has called new realism. Indeed, Ferraris is the author of one of the current's most representative books, Manifesto of New Realism. Thanks to the elaboration in this book, new realism has also become recognizable and available to a broader public, putting Ferrari's philosophy in strong conversation with contemporary currents of realism, including, among others, analytical realism and speculative realisms, represented by, for example, Mario De Caro, Marcus Gabriel, John Searle, and Graham Harman. Ferrari's realism suggests that reality resists our conceptual schemas by transcending them. He contrasts this reductive slogan of the various contractivisms, esse es concipi, to the robustness of reality, and warns us not to confuse ontology, being with epistemology, knowledge. However, he argues that reality's resistance is not a sign of shortcomings and failures. Rather, the relative autonomy of reality offers possibilities, chances, and resources for action. Beyond simplistic gestures, Ferraris has created a layered objective contextualism, according to which there is no monolithic objecthood, but only ontologically distinct kind of objects. His weak constructivism stresses that there are objects in which there is something non-constructive and non-constructed, but also objects that are indeed to a large, to a large extent are constructions, such as the social objects of inscriptions or social action, adding the proviso that at least two people must be involved in their creation. It is in this context that Ferraris has devoted special attention to documentality in his book on the subject. The, both, the most recent of which will be the subject of tomorrow's uh, seminar, all are welcome. According to him, precisely because documentality constitutively transcends intentionality, Documents can become autopoietic systems that presuppose iterability 
and practices of archiving and self-archiving, as in the case of big data content that nobody reads. One of the greatest features of Ferrari's philosophy is his attention to media and the technological conditions of experience, as in the case of Homo cellularis, mobile phone man. Ferrari sums up his new realism in the following movement of words, ontology, critique, enlightenment. Ferrari suggests that it is not the case that all reality is constructed by our conceptual schemas. Rather, there is ontological autonomy of certain spheres of objecthood, especially in the case of social objects. Drawing on these insights allows us to avoid relativism and an artificial relationship with reality. Second, he argues that the postmodernists were wrong to believe that to be certain of reality is to accept it and that realism is emancipatory. Against this view, the realist has the ability to criticize and transform reality. Indeed, a realist diagnosis is the premise of therapy. Finally, adherence to the legacy of enlightenment means that he does not accept the equation of knowledge and power. The former is not necessarily repressive rationality and therefore should not be demonized in general, but should be viewed in its various forms and contexts. As he writes, I quote, the subject does not merely contemplate. He also uses resources, seeks solutions, transforms situations. However, however, if this action is possible, it is because reality allows and indeed invites us to engage with it. Ferrari's philosophical position have a corresponding practice recognizable by its intense engagement. Far from confining himself to an ivory tower, Ferraris is conspicuously present in the public sphere. Among us, he is a columnist for La Repubblica, Neue Zürcher Zeitung and Liberation, having penned some uh, 800,000 800 articles and creator of dozens of television programs, in addition to which he has made significant contributions to a number of popular philosophy books. The insights of his new realism have been applied across a variety of fields, from architecture to literature, from pedagogy to medicine. His articles, interviews, and public appearances often touch on contemporary social phenomena, such as artificial intelligence, post-truth, or the role of documentality in digital politics. Most recently, he has tackled current post-COVID issues in his book, book uh, Post-Coronial Studies. It is worth pointing out that in addition to his scientific research and public engagement, Ferraris is also very institutionally active. He is a member of more than 50 academic and non-academic organizations and has headed numerous academic projects. Maurizio Ferraris stands out as an engaged intellectual who reflects critically on contemporary events and phenomena within and beyond the academy. Indeed, his work and the endeavors show a profound consideration for the very conditions of possibility of social reality and engagement. Not least, Ferrari's work is linked to our region in myriad ways, but in particular to the Institute for Philosophy and Social Theory, where he has spoken and participated in conferences any number of times, publishing articles in the Institute's journal and co-authoring a book published by the Institute. In light of this, the committee recognizes Maurizio Ferraris as a prolific and highly influential thinker original and socially engaged philosopher whose work aligns with the orientation of research excellence of the Institute for Philosophy and Social Theory and whose person exemplifies its engagement aims. Therefore, recommending he be awarded this year's Miladin Zivotic Prize. Professor Ferraris, please accept my sincere congratulations. <laughs> Profoundly, uh, can you hear me? Uh, uh, usually I am a little bit smarter, just a little bit smarter than uh, today because uh, I am ill, but uh, I won't say that uh, 
usually I'm extremely brilliant, uh, no, now uh, not, uh, simply in order to uh, uh, explain a kind of uh, uh, understatement uh, which uh, do not hide in any case, at any rate, uh, 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 the happiness uh, for being awarded uh, by such uh, important uh, uh, important prize and uh, it's very important for us several reasons for in a sense uh, for me a special link uh, to all this part of Europe that uh, has not just uh, to make uh, with the fact that uh, my uh, academic career started uh, just in the border in Trieste but uh, also because uh, uh, I remember as a child marvelous uh, uh, holidays uh, in Dalmatia in the 60s. You cannot imagine how beautiful was uh, this uh, reality in, uh, in the 60s. Uh, and uh, this remained for me uh, the magic. Uh, uh, maybe there is uh, a can. Uh, but this is just not just a, a matter of holidays. It's also the fact that uh, since uh, a lot of time, I have uh, a, a cooperation with the friends uh, of uh, uh, this institute, uh, uh, a long time lasting uh, uh, friendship with Gazla and with Peter and uh, uh, we met together uh, with uh, Derrida, it makes about uh, a quarter of a uh, century, I believe. And uh, so, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, now I uh, will try to uh, justify uh, the, uh, the reason why uh, I am interested uh, in uh, engagement. Because uh, as you all see, uh, I don't look like a revolutionary. I have no Molotov bottle or uh, uh, um, Basque like uh, Che Guevara or something similar. Uh, if I should give, uh, but this is an afterthought, a title uh, to this presentation, it would be a change, uh, you know, in uh, 1985 uh, and 1984, in fact, uh, uh, bef short before dying, uh, Habermas, uh, excuse me, Habermas, uh, uh, Foucault, and then there was the commentary of Habermas, uh, wrote uh, this uh, famous uh, short uh, article what is uh, enlightenment, uh, what is revolution, I would uh, uh, transform this uh, essay in what is engagement and what is institution. It's the sense in which uh, we try to transform this, uh, uh, this issue. Uh, and uh, just to start, I... Uh, will recall uh, a moment of, uh, well, almost a quarter of a century ago. I remember I was uh, in uh, New York for a conference uh, and uh, uh, Jacques Derrida gave uh, a famous uh, lecture uh, whose title was uh, The University Without uh, Condition which was uh, a reflection on uh, the conditions uh, of uh, an institution. It's no revolution, in a sense, without the institution. We all know that uh, um, Derrida was uh, no, uh, no such enthusiastic for the spontaneistic uh, mood of uh, uh, May, uh, 68, uh, uh, and uh, he also concluded, which was true, that uh, the result of all this was uh, 
that uh, the new French government was the most uh, conservative government in France after Second World War. So it was not precisely a success, uh, a political success, uh, uh, the uh, imagination to power. Um, and he also uh, said, and which is uh, uh, also repeated, uh, maybe, oh, okay, because he said that uh, uh, he was convinced that it was necessary to criticize the institution, but only if you are able to construct a counter-institution. And to me, this is the principle of a critical thinking. I will try to apply it uh, to the web because uh, now the mainstream uh, thinking on the web is that the web uh, is uh, something bad because uh, great companies uh, uh, take a lot of money and uh, they exert uh, a surveillance capitalism or uh, even worse. But, uh, well, okay, that's true. What should we have to do? Uh, we have to make a counter-institution. Namely, we have to uh, construct something alternative, some institution which are alternative to uh, this way of exploiting uh, the heritage of humanity which is in the center of the web. And therefore, we have uh, mostly to understand what web is. But I will, uh, I will join this point uh, only um, within a few minutes. Now, I uh, still have uh, uh, a point to underline. Uh, is not uh, this question of uh, the institution is not uh, something that uh, rises uh, uh, as, a, as a mushroom without any motivation. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, Tiziana Andina, uh, who, by the way, is the true director of Revista di Estetica. Uh, he was the former director. That's the, uh, you know, one of, one of the problems of the web is that uh, uh, the news remains uh, uh, outside the space and time. Uh, you will be always uh, uh, put in some situation because it remains. So, and, uh, um, and Peter wrote, uh, edited together an important uh, book on institution in action, uh, the nature and the role of institution in the real world. Uh, and uh, in his contribution, uh, Peter um, describes, uh, defines the institution as a higher order entity that uh, uh, enters in the social world. This suggests that institution is a form of capitalization. We have many people, many uh, individuals, and uh, putting them together is like to put together money. You have a capital. And uh, uh, I am sure, I am not sure that to be anti-capitalist is the solution. The solution is to create alternative forms of capitalization, exactly as the alternative form of, uh, uh, of institution we have spoke uh, before. Uh, and uh, in this sense, uh, and this will be my first drawing, I will uh, try to explain the relation between uh, 
individuals and institution with uh, a kind of uh, small So this is the drawing number one. We have uh, to imagine two circles that intersect. Uh, one uh, is uh, the automaton. Uh, the automaton, what is the automaton? The automaton uh, is uh, any kind of machine uh, that uh, is uh, projected to have a series uh, of uh, on, off, on, off, on, off. and so forth. Um, this is important because uh, uh, if, uh, for instance, those lights have an ephemeral life uh, like uh, humans uh, and uh, they die when I shut the light, I turn off the light uh, and then the light is uh, death, this will create uh, several problems uh, to all of us. But in fact, uh, it's not. At the end of uh, this ceremony, we turn off the light, and tomorrow it will uh, uh, still be, in a sense, in life. So um, the, this uh, automaton, and automaton is uh, practically every kind of uh, uh, technical instruments human uses. This is an automaton. I, it has an explicit purpose. It serves uh, to write. Then uh, I recap because it's important. It's recommended. And then I can use it uh, tomorrow, which is not the case, for instance, uh, for a colleague. I cannot recap a colleague and uh, use the colleague uh, uh, after, uh, a year after, especially if I didn't give uh, food to the colleague. And uh, uh, the automaton is also the institution. Because uh, the institution is uh, able to bring uh, something that is uh, ephemeral as all what is uh, organic to a most uh, extended uh, way and time. Think about uh, the Roman Empire or the Catholic Church, which is in fact the pure heritage <laughs> of Roman Empire. And uh, uh, the other part, but uh, uh, one can, uh, the question is, uh, why uh, should I need an automaton? Why should I need an institution? Because the automaton do not need automata, and the institution do not need institution. They really have no goal, no intrinsical goal. Uh, uh, I mean, this pen, as uh, no need to write, is not even uh, aware of writing, and uh, is just prepared in order to satisfy the need of uh, an organism, which in the case is me, that need to write. So, uh, on the other part, on the other. Uh, uh, circle, we have uh, the soul. Uh, I say soul in the sense that uh, for Aristotle, everything is living, is a soul. 
plants have a soul, animals have a soul, human too have a soul sometimes. But the point is <coughs> that uh, what characterizes uh, humans uh, in their difference uh, to other kinds of uh, souls uh, is the fact that they are systematically connected with tools, with uh, technical instruments. Uh, I mean, there is nothing more misleading than the idea of Rousseau of a human which is perfect without technology and then comes technology and society and he became uh, corrupted. Is not at all the case. The first uh, human uh, is uh, this kind of ape that decided that, that of systematically use instrument. For instance, a stock. And this is uh, characteristic. Think about uh, the question that uh, uh, the Sphinx makes to Oedipo. What is the animal that in the morning work at four, four uh, uh, legs and then uh, on noon on two and the evening on three? This is extremely relative because uh, the technological tool, the stick, enters in the definition of man. And this for very good reason, because otherwise, uh, uh, because there is a decision uh, taken by the human to be, to stand. Uh, 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 a chimpanzee or uh, another great, great uh, 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 anthropomorphic uh, animal can always come back on uh, four legs, which is not the case. Uh, I believe it would be humiliated in if uh, we all were uh, on uh, four legs here. Moreover, it would take a lot of spa space more and uh, uh, avoids the possibility of speaking freely because uh, the contact face-to-face -face, uh, requires uh, that uh, we, we stand. So the soul uh, is interesting because uh, differently from uh, uh, the uh, machine, as just two position, on, off. Or if you want to be or not to be. Uh, I mean, uh, the point is that all organism uh, cannot uh, have any kind of resurrection. Whereas uh, uh, radio, cars, uh, for radio cars, uh, computers, uh, and so on and so forth, uh, Re resurrection is uh, an ordinary fact, uh, whereas uh, uh, for uh, organism is extraordinary. We are still speaking about a, re a possible resurrection uh, that happened a lot of time ago, who knows. But uh, the fact of having this uh, definitive end make it that humans can have ends and purposes. Not just humans, of course. Also, uh, beavers or dogs have definitive goals and need and urges. Think about the importance of the time. Why the time is important? It is important because uh, we all are engaged in uh, uh, metabolic processes uh, and uh, normally two times uh, uh, a day we have to, to, to eat, for instance, or we need water. Uh, and this is not something that uh, can be postponed uh, as, uh, uh, as long as we want. It's not possible. This makes a great difference between uh, uh, the machine and the human because this tablet, for instance, suppose that uh, this tablet uh, uh, has a lack of electricity. It do not suffer. 
it do not even have the feeling of needing electricity. It will never fight with another tablet in order to pick electricity uh, and, uh, and survive. Because it's not interesting. It can survive uh, the day after with no electricity. And this gives goals and uh, to speak more uh, philosophically, a teleology. Only what can have uh, an end, a real end, and not just uh, a transitory end, can have ends, real goals, real intentions. And uh, this is, in general, the difference that already Kant noticed. Organism have internal goals in the sense that they are no goals. What is the goal of uh, myself? Who know? Me, uh, on this point, I have not, not, no special intuition about uh, what is uh, the goal of uh, Ferraris uh, as uh, organism, just survive. Uh, but uh, what is uh, the goal of this is perfectly clear, so that uh, uh, professor have no goals, no, no professor, professor have goals because they are social construction. But uh, the bodies in which professor is embodied have no goal except survive. Try to survive the most possible. Whereas uh, the external finality of uh, all technological devices is perfectly clear. Well, uh, engagement in my sense, uh, is the result uh, which is typical of human. I cannot imagine a beaver which is engaged, uh, an activist uh, beaver, a beaver activist, uh, a social action done by cause or similar. Why? Because uh, uh, there is not uh, this uh, 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 systematic uh, interaction between, uh, on the one hand, uh, the automaton and the institution, which is uh, the continuity across the time of something which in itself uh, has no goal, and the teleology goal and uh, the on-off of, uh, the, of the soul. Before uh, coming to show how this uh, abstract form can be transformed in uh, an, uh, a political engagement, the political engagement which is important for us right now uh, is, uh, uh, I just want to make uh, some uh, reference uh, to an interesting passage, uh, some interesting passage at the very beginning of uh, the human condition of uh, an Arendt, Vita Activa, in fact, the, the, because the, 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 the English translation uh, recalls uh, uh, the, the, the book of Marot and uh, creates a form of uh, <coughs> confusion. But, um, uh, at the very beginning of uh, um, uh, Vita Activa, uh, Arendt tell us why institutions are so important and so related to engagement. Because uh, she starts, yes, she, sorry, she has 
the same intuition of Heidegger. This, as you see, it was uh, uh, Heidegger, pure Sein und Zeit, uh, what I wrote this uh, here. But uh, as you know, uh, Anna Arendt had also the natality, not just the mortality, uh, as, uh, um, as Heidegger have done. And uh, she speaks about uh, uh, the interesting situation of uh, uh, the Greek culture. Because in the Greek culture, you don't have any idea of uh, eternity, because uh, the eternity is an idea that comes after with uh, Christians and so on. But you have the immortality of gods, which are more or less people like us with all uh, our bias, so to speak, and the mortality of uh, humans. Uh, and uh, all this in a cyclical situation which is nature. Nature is cyclical, and in this uh, cycle, on, off, on, off, on, off, also the seasons, uh, in a sense, are on, off, on, off, uh, um, we can introduce a form of line, which is uh, the birth and the death of humans. Humans are she says, uh, making uh, the same mistake take, uh, of uh, her master, uh, only human can die. Uh, and uh, also animal, of course, can die, but uh, nonetheless. Uh, and uh, since uh, the humans are aware of being uh, mortals in a universe that is uh, cyclical, so that it cannot die, and uh, with uh, goals that cannot die, then humans create institutions. The institution, the works, uh, the traces, uh, are what humans create in order <coughs> to overcome this, uh, uh, in a sense, uh, this discrimination that human has vis-a-vis uh, -vis the nature as such and the goats, they can die. Well, uh, and the, the task, I quote, the task and the potential greatness of mortars lie in their ability to produce things, works and deeds and uh, words. Note that in the same time, uh, John Austin uh, gave in Harvard uh, the series of lectures that originally was uh, called uh, Words and Deeds. More. Uh, uh, strictly related uh, to the creation of uh, documents, uh, whereas uh, after that uh, they were called how to do things with words because uh, it's more sexy as a title. Well, so uh, what is the sense of uh, this first part uh, of my presentation? Is to say that uh, Engagement uh, cannot go without uh, institution and technology. And uh, the true engagement, uh, the only viable and useful engagement for humans right now, and maybe for the very, from the very beginning, is uh, a wise use of institution counter-institution and technology. I, I believe 
I don't say nothing surprising because uh, uh, a technophile like Karl Marx, it's difficult to find someone who was more technophile than Marx and uh, uh, also quoting uh, Faust, uh, Goethe, Hamlet, in order to show how powerful was the industry. Now, we have the web. We have the web, and the web uh, give us, and uh, this is uh, my goal, my hope for engagement, give the possibility of create a brand new capital that belongs to the humanity, should go back to the humanity by means of counter institution, avoiding the terrible uh, problem that uh, characterizes uh, uh, contemporary politics. Because uh, uh, think about uh, uh, the facts of uh, Capitol Hill. Uh, I'm sure that uh, among the, those uh, pittoresque people who took Capitol Hill, there were also truck drivers. Why this? Because uh, it's very well known that uh, 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 the driving of trucks will be automated in short time, so that they understand that uh, they will lose uh, all their possibility of work. So, and in the meantime, there are a smart president, people like uh, Obama or uh, Michelle Obama or other smart people that says, uh, well, uh, uh, the United States uh, is uh, are a great country because uh, smart people <coughs> can succeed, look at me. But if you are not smart, what do you have to do? To die? No, I vote Trump. And uh, this explains very well a lot of other situation that uh, you recognize. Uh, I vote uh, Meloni in Italy, I vote uh, uh, for uh, Salvini in Italy, not, by the way, that Salvini wa was much more fascist than Meloni, uh, even if historically it's not, and this because uh, um, he, he was a male with all this uh, uh, fascist attitude uh, that uh, does not work uh, for a uh, female. Well, how to do with this? Because uh, class, uh, the classical answer to this problem, what to do uh, to, towards the uh, technological transformation that makes uh, that people uh, actively work in order to lose their works, because it's what we do. Uh, we uh, produce data on our devices that uh, increases automation, and this increased automation will uh, uh, reduce our works. So we are, in a, sen a sense, uh, cutting the, the, the tree on which we are seated. Uh, the solution is to really understand, in my eyes, uh, this is uh, the philosophical part, uh, what really the web is, exactly as, uh, for instance, Marx understood what really capitalism, uh, industrial capitalism was, and uh, I'm not comparing myself with Marx. I'm not uh, as rich as he was, but uh, uh, um, I'm just uh, comparing uh, uh, the need of uh, an analysis of the web which should not be reduced either to the description 
of the prairie of uh, freedom. At the very beginning it was so, and or uh, the panopticon of uh, surveillance capitalism and so on. Uh, in a sense, in the analysis of the web, we are mostly in the situation of Proudhon, Saint-Simon, all those uh, guys uh, that come before Marx. But we can maybe better understand what the web is uh, with uh, other circles. What is the web? Uh, the answer, the answer given by experts is information and communication because uh, the branch of uh, 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 technological works on the web is ICT, information and communication technologies, which is completely misleading because the web is not at all mainly communication, it's recording. This is what makes the difference of the web vis-a-vis -vis, uh, other technologies, because the digital technology has this feature that at the very beginning was not considered so important, namely that in order to encode the message, you have previously to record the message so that everything that has to do with the web, with the digital in general, is recorded. So recording. is the essence of, oh, wow. And uh, note, this is also a, a relevant difference between humans uh, and machines, because machines, especially uh, electronic devices, suffers for uh, water, whereas organisms uh, like uh, water smack. It's not a good idea to give water to uh, uh, an iPad. Um, well, we have uh, usually, and most of the time, uh, uh, the web is described like an infosphere. This means uh, a place uh, in which we have uh, informations. No doubt that we have informations in the web, but uh, this is the pure representation of the web, what the web appear to us. Uh, and this for very good reason, because uh, uh, when we go on the web, exactly like uh, when we go on the li in a library or when we are looking for some kind of information, we get information. And uh, so there is a, a semantic capital. Semantic capital means that in order to get this capital is uh, more than sufficient that you are able to read, for instance, sometimes not even uh, if you look uh, at a pornographic movie, for instance, reading is not, not so important and not even knowing uh, the language uh, used, even if Apparently, there are a lot of humans in the world that are learning languages looking at uh, porno uh, uh, movies because uh, now they are the subtitle. I, I, I think that the vocabulary is extremely limited, but it's interesting to know that this happens. But it's semantic because it means we don't need uh, 
uh, a, a, a peculiar um, knowledge in order to understand uh, uh, um, a text of Wikipedia, for instance. Uh, the only need is that we know the language of uh, the text. For instance, I would not be able to read a text of Wikipedia in Serbo-Croatian. But this is not uh, uh, the responsibility of, uh, the, of Wikipedia, it's the responsibility of myself. It's a semantic capital and, in fact, is an attractor. I mean, uh, in order the web is profitable, is necessary, is necessary that a lot of people go on the web. If uh, only three people go on the web, as it was in the original idea of ARPANET or uh, uh, some scientist that, that uh, there will be nothing interesting uh, in uh, all this, and this, of course, would not change uh, our life. But, um, and uh, therefore, if uh, I open a site and note that there is a lot of uh, people like me that open the site, I didn't, uh, with uh, the thought of Maurizio Ferraris, I'm sure that I will have three people, four people visiting this and then leaving. Uh, but if uh, I uh, uh, um, put uh, a side in which there is the exact forecast of uh, uh, the time in Belgrade tomorrow, then there will be a lot of people. Uh, uh, the 10 best restaurant in Belgrade. Also a lot of people coming here. And uh, all the kind of services, uh, calling taxi, uh, uh, making reservation for planes, uh, and uh, every, any other thing like this. But this, uh, as uh, Schopenhauer would say, is simply representation, is the veil of Maya, so to speak. Uh, the real job in the web is hidden to the users, and this what I call docusphere. Because it implies uh, all the documents that everyone produces, produces in connection with the web. Note, now not, no more necessarily in connection with the web because uh, there is a lot of camera taking uh, uh, notice of us uh, uh, and, and in China even more and more. Uh, uh, cameras, but we are not aware of uh, producing these documents, and especially we are not aware that those documents uh, are much more important than the document we get in the Infosphere. Because uh, suppose that uh, I go to Wikipedia checking whether Belgrade is in Serbia. I get an information which has uh, not such a great value because uh, everybody knows that uh, uh, Belgrade is in Serbia, but the platform has the information that uh, uh, an Italian in those places uh, at that time asked whether the grade was in Serbia. And uh, the platform can also, is interesting, of course not. But <coughs> the platform has the possibility of comparing this data with billions of other data. 
and knowing all the people that looked whether Belgrade was in Serbia, maybe uh, I would say uh, if uh, Franz Ferdinand was uh, looking uh, whether uh, Belgrade was in Serbia, um, someone uh, uh, can uh, have some suspicion about uh, the idea of uh, uh, Austria to invade Serbia, for instance. Uh, this could be a useful information, but it was an archduke. Uh, uh, the, the interest uh, of my personal interest is not so important. But this applies to any kind of information and uh, can create, create, pardon me, also uh, um, a gigantic amount of possible value because you have uh, as platform a uh, hypercomputer that can uh, manage this data. There are a lot of uh, national states that do not own this kind of computer. Whereas uh, uh, if you have a gigantic uh, uh, instrument, uh, you can get information from uh, Mostly everything. For instance, uh, I have uh, a cell phone in my pocket. I don't suppose that you two have. Uh, this is uh, a very poor information from a single point of view. But uh, for instance, uh, if uh, uh, the decree Meloni will be applied in Italy that uh, avoids uh, rave party and uh, other activities, uh, um, well, it could be interesting for the police to know that there are about uh, 40 people together in the same place. And uh, this is interesting. And uh, if uh, uh, on the other side, uh, uh, it was uh, Google map checking uh, uh, if uh, uh, taking this information, then uh, Google Map will conclude uh, that there is uh, problems in traffic because <laughs> there is a lot of... Uh, well, therefore, in the docusphere, we have a syntactic capital. And the syntactic capital is, uh, I call it syntactical, I name it syntactical, because uh, 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 the data per se has no value, no possible value, but if they are put together with a lot of other data and interpreted in a clever way, then they can have an enormous value. But we need syntaxes. We have to put them together. Alone, they are not so interesting. Here, if you want, uh, we have uh, enters uh, the political part, uh, the Marxian part of uh, the job, because uh, here we have uh, the production of a surplus value. The surplus value is the fact that, you know, you know the, uh, for uh, Marx, uh, the medieval uh, uh, worker was in a sense more aware of uh, its exploitment than the industrial worker because uh, the medieval uh, uh, peasant uh, had two fields its own field and the field of the master. And when he works on the field of the master, he's perfectly aware of working for the master and not for himself. We are, as you know, uh, the worker in uh, uh, modern industry uh, do not know what is the exact moment in which he ceases of uh, paying its own salary 
and begins to pay the surplus value of the capitalist. By the way, also the capitalist is not aware of uh, what is the exact moment because it depends uh, from the condition of the market, but still there is uh, this uh, form of unawareness. Well, now we are in the situation in which all the humanity, including all men, retired people that make other works, children and uh, uh, any other kind of uh, people, including beggars, who has, uh, as you know, usually uh, a cell phone, produces value, i.e. works without even being conscious of uh, uh, working. This is the problem. And uh, what is uh, the solution? The revolution. What kind of revolution can be the solution here? Because uh, these surplus values right now uh, is uh, used uh, in two main ways. The first way is uh, this of uh, uh, American uh, companies that uh, are not interested at all in uh, the private life uh, of uh, individuals. They are not spying us. Uh, if I buy a Kalashnikov uh, on Amazon, supposing that are on sale on Amazon, uh, Amazon will not go to the police to say Ferraris buy the Kalashnikov simply the day after they will offer me uh, other weapons uh, or knives or bombs or, or something that the algorithm finds uh, uh, um, coherent with my interest. But they don't share uh, uh, the, the value they get from that. Uh, they share this value only partially with people working in the network, but as you know, it's very easy to fire them. We are uh, witnessing a lot of firing in uh, the US. And uh, the other solution is China. China socialized uh, this surplus value, and this explains why the poorest country of the world in which uh, uh, young children were killed and because that was uh, uh, now uh, is uh, a superpower. And this is because uh, they are, uh, have decided to nationalize the platforms and uh, to distribute the advantage of the platforms to the people, uh, but in the same time, they get an absolute control on the society, a complete lack of freedom that no one of us uh, can, uh, uh, can accept, I, I believe. Therefore, and I'm going to the conclusion, the solution I propose uh, that uh, uh, is uh, engagement as institution is this one. First, we have uh, a, say, a philosophical move to make that uh, docusphere per se do not exist unless you have an anthroposphere that gives good reasons to produce data. 
because uh, the web is interested only in human form of life because machines do not know how humans act and what uh, humans want. Therefore, it needs to record humans form of life. And on the other end, the web uh, cannot, uh, is not interesting for any kind of form of life except humans. Again, I can't imagine uh, a, a beaver going on the web. Could you uh, represent a beaver interesting in taking a mobile phone and uh, looking uh, for, uh, uh, for cheap and chop uh, 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 Walt Disney movies uh, on uh, beavers? Uh, or No, because only humans are interested, for instance, in this kind of uh, things. So uh, we have the proof that humanity existed uh, for uh, uh, millennials without the web, but we are also sure that the web will disappear in a second if uh, humanity will disappear. So there is uh, a, a point uh, that uh, gives the humanity uh, an advantage on the web exactly as the uh, soul has an advantage for to, toward the automaton because the soul can survive without the automaton whereas the automaton ascends only if you have souls and here we have a human capital And this uh, do not mean, uh, uh, because uh, it was uh, a rhetoric uh, in, uh, um, in industries, we have to improve all of uh, human capital. This means uh, better exploit uh, the employees. Uh, the human capital is the fact that uh, without humans, all this kind of capital were not possible. Uh, how to exploit exploiting uh, this human capital? We have to understand it as a, a human heritage. Namely, uh, heritage that belongs to humanity and that need to go back to the humanity. And this is not simply a rhetoric because, for instance, uh, uh, now there is a, a big fight uh, in Africa between uh, uh, the United States and China in order to get the market or the web why? Because there is uh, uh, a billion and a half of person, mostly very young, that uses this device and produces data, which is an enormous value. So uh, they are trying to get this capital. In this, I don't see nothing uh, bad if uh, this capital is not used for surveillance purposes. But what is uh, the alternative institution we have to go to this? Because we have uh, two solutions. First, declare war to the United States. Second, declare war to China. Or third, hope that in the United States there will be a Soviet revolution. Fourth, uh, to uh, think that uh, there will be a kind of change of power in China, which is uh, uh, the less probable hypothesis I can imagine. Uh, but for instance, 
and this could be a good reason for uh, Serbia to enter uh, in the, the European Union. Um, in the European Union, we have the right of uh, asking or data to the platform. Of course, no one uses this right because our data are not interesting at all for us. But suppose that you create institution or you make uh, you use otherwise uh, already existing institution, for instance, banks that ask uh, their clients, allow me to ask the platforms uh, the, your data. Then I put them together exactly as I do with your money, but the result of this capitalization will not be given to you, but to this huge amount of humanity, which has the fear of losing work, of being neglected, not important, not uh, uh, on the, so to speak, bad side of uh, the history. Uh, and uh, this is not just uh, a proposal. I have a dream. No, it's not a dream. We are doing right now this in Turin with a bank uh, because it's, it's possible. It's clear there are technical difficulties, but this can be created. And this applies to bank, to hospitals. And because uh, uh, in this sense, uh, the new capital of the webfare is very different from the web welfare because the welfare was based basically on taxes. You take uh, some money to those uh, who have more money and you give uh, it to social services uh, in order to avoid uh, that the Britons uh, became communists, for instance. Uh, but uh, when this appears, uh, uh, disappeared this hypothesis, then disappeared the welfare. Uh, <coughs> whereas the welfare has to do with a capital which is completely new because uh, humans acted, needed, uh, make consumption since the beginning of the history. But all this was not recorded and disappeared like tears in the rain. Uh, uh, it's uh, uh, renewable because if I ask uh, Google a barrel of, uh, uh, of oil. First, he says that he has no oil. And if by chance Google has also a barrel of oils, if he give me the barrel, uh, Google do not need, uh, uh, do not own the barrel. But if I ask Google my data, still Google has its own data. I can use uh, the data for the purposes of my community, and Google can go on making all its uses, also because there are big investments in this, uh, in this sense. Last not least, uh, this capital is uh, uh, fair, because it, uh, we are not, with, the, with the increasing automation, we are no more interesting for machine as a giver or force, like with an hammer, or of a patient capability of being alienated, like uh, in uh, uh, the old industries, but only as humans, stupid, intelligent, the more stupid, of course, uh, and. Uh, and, and this is all the interest because 
everything in principle can be automated except the consumption. I can create a machine for producing pizza. Excellent idea. A machine for, produce, for distributing pizza. Another excellent idea. But it's stupid to produce a machine in order to eat pizza. It makes no sense because all the process is oriented to solve and satisfy human needs that are not automated and cannot be automated. Uh, if it is so, if there is this change, think about uh, what uh, uh, it was also in the act of the apostles and uh, then uh, was a, is a famous quote of Marx in the Critique of Program of Gotha. And he say, from each one on his uh, capabilities, abilities and to each one on the basis of if its needs. Of course, in a, a society in which production is the main goal of humans, this principle will be never realized. But in a society in which the most important thing is the need, then this kind of uh, sort of abstract prophecy can be realized and realized not by uh, 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 a red October or something similar, but by a bank, uh, an hospital, uh, something less uh, heroic, uh, but in a sense less dangerous. Thank you very much. <laughs>
the famous example of Cambridge Analytica, which sold the data because it was necessary for a political campaign. But uh, uh, in Chinese model, we obviously know, we are informed that this data is used in various directions and used basically to observe us. In this other model, we somehow, somehow know, but we don't know. We agree. We click you know when we go we click that we agree everything never read what we agree actually and uh, uh, what is what is the the, the uh, is it intention that is uh, the main difference or can we imagine some uh, i'm interested actually in role of the actors yes uh, the, the, what is the the, the 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 difference between these two roles of actors and their intent let's say like that it's basically it's a very good question, of course. Uh, it's basically a cultural difference between, because uh, uh, it is sure that uh, the data are used uh, for political purposes uh, by agents uh, uh, in uh, the Brexit, uh, in uh, uh, the, 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 the election of Trump, uh, and so on and so forth. As well, I am pretty sure that also the American government uses the data uh, exactly like Chinese. But if you cannot uh, make it explicit, uh, everything changes because uh, uh, I believe that no one in uh, the Western world would accept the idea that uh, uh, his freedom of initiative, uh, his individuality uh, is uh, uh, ruled by algorithm and so on and so forth. Whereas for the Chinese, apparently, for most of them, it's fine. So that uh, um, this makes, for instance, the possibility that uh, if you discover that uh, uh, Russia helped uh, Trump uh, 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 to win the election, uh, you, you can make a scandal right on the newspaper, uh, make a wage of opinion, etc. Whereas in China, you cannot, you will say, it is so, you will be, uh, you will live in a society uh, in which uh, you get prime for uh, your uh, uh, conduct uh, and uh, upgrade uh, on this basis, uh, etc. That is some, something that cannot be accepted for us. So, is a is a basic, <coughs> me, basically a, um, a cultural difference that anyway makes difference. Uh, the institution I suggest are free institution in the sense that uh, uh, coming into this institution is uh, uh, on the basis of free will, uh, of voluntary choice, uh, and uh, it is a part of this institution to decide how to invest uh, the, the capital. And uh, uh, to me, uh, also, also because they are smaller, but consider, uh, we always ignore that we mostly ignore that when we speak about uh, platforms, we think about uh, Google or something similar. But every institution now is a platform. This uh, uh, institute is a platform, and this platform disposes of a data bank which is much more well organized than the data who owns Google. Uh, if we are able to mix this organized data to the 
other data that comes from the great platforms, we have an, an advantage. And, uh, uh, and the commercial platforms are really worried about this. Uh, I noticed that, that when I, uh, in conference, uh, there are representative of uh, Google, Amazon, uh, they are usually very worried uh, on this because they know that uh, uh, a bank, an hospital, an university is a heavy platform that has data organized. So there is this gigantic, huge capital that can be exploited. Consider, for instance, that uh, you know the list of uh, uh, the most rich people in the world. Uh, this year it was uh, particularly, in a sense, ironic because uh, there was uh, a Nutella Ferrero who went over Zuckerberg, which means uh, mountain of sugar. So there is, uh, but this why? Because uh, they both are answering. Uh, uh, needs of humans, needs to be considered for Zuckerberg, needs of uh, eating Nutella for uh, Ferrero. But uh, the, the real interesting data is the fact that uh, the richest humans of this year are usually richest the double of 10 years ago. From this, uh, usually one can draw the conclusion that rich get richer and poor get poorer. Why not consider that this new wealth comes from this hidden capital already existing and that can be exploited as as well as we will, and uh, with a huge possibility that we underestimate. Uh, yeah, thank you for a really inspiring lecture and really clear lecture. And I really like the idea of, of uh, an engaged institution, a counter institution, framing this uh, 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 in, in the way if you, in which you explained. However, I think that this new capital also comes with a cost, and the cost is uh, human attention. So, human attention, human attention. So, in order, what makes the met metadata produced by the, this institution or Google or whatever platform is the fact that it can be turned into a, mach in, into a machine, which Shoshana Zubov calls, for example, yeah. surveillance capitalism. So, when you, uh, what you lose, Effectually, is is uh, is is human attention. So, I just this is my worry with this model. So, what will happen if, for example, universities turn themselves in, into a platform that uh, uh, are sell to advertisers, in which they try to grab attention of students for, for example, some commercial things? So that that was that that's my main, uh, uh, so to say, worry about this model. O overall, I think that the future. Uh, uh, fight, or, uh, or at least a, a, a huge amount of this, will be uh, a, a, a fight against against, uh, uh, against uh, uh, data or, or for our data, uh, and and that I support. But however, the the idea of attention is is I think really important. So, what are your thoughts about that? Many thanks. Uh, it was uh, uh, an excellent question, which has. Uh, two sides in uh, my eyes. Uh, a very classical side is uh, the fact that uh, uh, any new technological device uh, reduces uh, human capabilities. Uh, this was already the criticism of writing in Plato. And we are all well, well aware of the fact that uh, uh, civilization without writing as uh, an excellent memory, much more than, than what we have. But uh, 
not only we survive, but we survive better because the externalization of uh, a lot of knowledge allow us uh, to make what is properly human. And properly human, since we are an organism, is the future. Because the, the great problem with uh, 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 machine learning is that machine learns only from the past. So they cannot imagine the future. Uh, only uh, someone who can ask uh, where I will dine this evening is someone who can imagine the future. Uh, and uh, this is the uh, special feature of humans and also of uh, other animals. But the other animals are not connected with technological devices. Therefore, uh, I am not uh, so uh, preoccupied uh, by, uh, by this issue. Also, there is a, uh, also a related issue that says uh, that uh, also think about uh, the stupid idea that this will be the end of theory because we have data. This is like uh, the map one to one of Borges' uh, novel. Of course, it's a new tool to, uh, and uh, we need much more theory now in order to interpret data than before because we have more data and also an, an enormous advantage for human sciences because classically the idea that uh, 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 the nature can be known because uh, as clear data and human who knows because they are always changing now we can know much better humans and i am not uh, of uh, the theory part of the theory that like in matrix ignorance is a bliss. I think that ignora, uh, knowledge is always an advantage. Uh, I have only uh, a small consideration, which is not related uh, directly to what you said, but uh, uh, one uh, concern uh, uh, which is very uh, spread uh, among the algorithms is that uh, algorithms as bias, you know. Uh, but on the one hand, one can say human as bias. Uh, and uh, so what? For instance, uh, uh, we are worried about uh, the fact that an uh, automatic driving car can kill someone, but we have the evidence, the perpetual evidence that every Saturday night uh, there are uh, people killed by other people drunk uh, on the car, uh, which is not the case uh, for a uh, machine. Uh, but uh, the most important is to consider that often uh, the solution is uh, we have to put ethics in the algorithms. I suppose that uh, you already heard this. And this goes back to all the discourse of ethics of communication and so on and so forth. But consider that putting ethics in algorithms is putting bias in algorithm. Because ethics is a bias. If uh, uh, a uh, Christian Catholic uh, put, uh, make uh, an algorithm, I am sure that uh, an Islamic will be dissatisfied because, for instance, uh, uh, um, there will be a privilege of, of Sunday over uh, Friday. Uh, and uh, this is, uh, so this is not uh, the way of uh, going out. Uh, uh, the question, but soon uh, we will find uh, the way. Okay. Yes, absolutely. 
Yes, thank you. So uh, what is admirable with this realist argumentation is uh, it's a straightforward nature, so I will do it in the same way. So, but I will go and target what you have uh, illustrated in, in, your, in your first slide. What happens if this off on off switch breaks down completely, especially what is, let's say, ontic sphere of nature and what if the nature completely gets disrupted so we cannot count anymore on its well let's say use heideggerian language presence at hand so what happens and what kind of a engagement should be and will or could be developed in cases of ecological crisis where we get those huge disruptions and especially if what happens if a uh, technosphere which helps us as a web of intermediaries which translate the nature uh, collapses as well. Let's say that Peter Half, uh, has calculated that we will uh, survive only 11 days on this planet if we don't have technosphere uh, against uh, what is the nature and its own intentionality. So this will be the question. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, humans can uh, disappear. Natural, of course, not because nature is much stronger than humans, and there are a lot of form of life than expect uh, to take our places uh, exactly as uh, we have done with dinosaurs uh, or similar. So that uh, uh, I find uh, somehow uh, uh, megalomaniac, uh, uh, the saying, we have to save the planet. Uh, the planet uh, don't need is stronger than us. He will uh, finish in a ball of fire, but not uh, for uh, uh, the climate, uh, the, 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 the warming, carbon, uh, etc. But because the sun will explode, including, and um, we have to say we have to. Uh, protect the environment uh, that allows human lives and other forms of life uh, compatible with human life. For instance, uh, we have uh, engaged uh, uh, fight uh, against the virus. Uh, from a purely ecological point of view, it's a nonsense because uh, we were the environment of the uh, of the viruses, and we were destroying an environment uh, in order to destroy the, the, the viruses. Um, therefore, uh, I simply suggest that when someone uh, tells you we have to save the planet, uh, you should always say, why just the planet? Why not the universe? And it became absolutely apparent how uh, uh, improper is uh, this point. Thank you very much for a uh, very interesting also discussion. Afterwards, we are coming to the end of uh, tonight's event. I'm uh, particularly happy that Maurizio joined us, so please just one more applause for him. <laughs> Just a small announcement, this is not the end. Uh, tomorrow is a holiday in Serbia, but still, this institute is a very engaged institution and continues working tomorrow also. So I'm happy to invite you tomorrow to the two book seminars, one about uh, philosophy of future generation, which will be a discussion about Tiananmen book. And afterwards, we are going to discuss a little bit more about uh, documentity, a book about by Maurizio Ferraris. So if you are able to join us tomorrow, we would be particularly happy. And last but not the least, I didn't do this, uh, uh, I didn't do justice to the person who made this award, which we uh, gave to Maurizio tonight. So I would just like particularly thank to uh, Celestina Vicevic, creation artist. Uh, uh, this is her handcraft, actually, which is presenting the sun. <laughs> 
Uh, and I think I wanted to mention this because uh, as everything which we are doing, I think, and particularly when you mentioned at one point that uh, uh, you were working in neighboring city Trieste, <laughs> uh, this common space of, uh, let's say, former Yugoslavia is still living in this institute. So we as a Serbian today institution, although we are trying not to be only Serbian institution, is also cooperating with Croatian artists to give a word to the international uh, thinkers. So that was something I just wanted to mention and thank to author of the award. So thank you very much. Thank you very much.